With no events in the near future, Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely in an interesting spot. There are so many high-end cards that players have for competitive purposes that will plummet in price. These cards hold a tremendous value, but if you get rid of them right now, you can possibly pick them up for a little bit cheaper down the road. In this video, we're going to be talking about the cards that you guys should sell before they plummet in price for that reason. I know it's a hard time for some players right now, so getting rid of these cards at a time of need and then picking up later might be your best bet. So if you guys are looking for more videos like this, then make sure you destroy that like button but also if you guys want to find out what cards you should buy before they skyrocket in price once this epidemic is over then of course go ahead and let us know down below in the comment section until then let's start on with this list now as i'm recording this video the secret slayer set isn't even out yet but there are some cards that are alarmingly expensive one of them is edlick the golden lord at Ed edlick edlich edward Edlick the Golden Lord is a really powerful card not only for its own strategy, but for the zombie strategy itself. The basis of this particular strategy is to keep on summoning this card as it's your only monster, but you also have trap monsters that revolve around it. That's the reason why this card is so expensive. That and the fact that it was a short print. I think that Edlick is a really, really good card. It's actually an amazing card in the Secret Slayer set, but $60 for a card? that's gonna see zero competitive play right now, that's a little bit too much. Go ahead and pop off your Eglitz. If you can get $60 a pop for this card, i do it. Because I see this card's best price point being in between the $30 to $40 range, so making 30 to 20 bucks off of a card immediately is too strong. Next is a card that took the meta by storm. You can say that it's price skyrocketing lightning fast. Lightning Storm is an amazing card off the Ignition Assault set, punishing your opponent for playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Because that's exactly what we need in any meta. Yeah, right? That is exactly what we need. Yeah, it is. Now, the reason why Lightning Storm is on this list is because of its exorbitant price point. $100 for a card that isn't a demand staple is kind of outrageous. Lightning Storm, while a very good card, sometimes even required in certain strategies, isn't a guaranteed card in every strategy, and that's where players are left scratching their heads. A card this extends it should be demanded to be played in every single deck. See when Pot of Desires was most popular, Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs. Those are some really good cards that were over that $80 price mark that were worth the price point. I strongly feel that Lightning Storm is not worth its salt. $110 is insanely high. I think that its max price point will sit at about the extravagance range at about $80. It's not due for any type of reprint though, so I could just be flat out wrong. Sometimes that's how life is. Now, I really feel bad for picking on the Secret Slayer set. I personally think that it is an awesome set with some pretty good cards in it, such as Super Rare Upstart Goblin and Super Rare Solemn Judgment. I'm not crying for my Upstart Goblins that are Turbo Pack. No, I couldn't be doing that. Couldn't be doing that. Granted, it is another short print, and it is another secret rare in Ad Emancipator Researcher. Like, seriously, like, why Ad Emancipator? That, that sounds really, it sounds like the deck got emancipated and then just got off to a rocky start. Get what I'm going there? Granted, Ad Emancipator Researcher is one of the more powerful cards allowing you to excavate and then special summon, but let's face it. Ad Emancipator is not a competitive deck right now. It could be a lot better within the next upcoming sets, probably even a little bit more rock support, but even if we were playing Yu-Gi-Oh! events, this deck would not see the light of day in competitive relevancy. Master Rule 5 helps this deck tremendously, but um, yeah, it's not the deck that I would probably say deserves a $40 card. Now granted, Dragon Maids have a $40 Dragon Maid card, but that's just the waifu tax. I mean, come on, everybody pays for cute. Wait, is, is Emancipator, is that a, is it a chick? Oh my God, it's a chick. All right, I mean, I, I guess. Two videos in a row. It's gonna be Apollos of the Bow Goddess. Now people call me crazy when I told you to get rid of your Apollos of the Bow Goddesses when they were $120 each. And um, if Chris Brown has anything to say in this video, it's look at me now, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have gained a whole $30 if you decided to get rid of them before and pick them up now. Now, I'm still going to say get rid of Apollos of the Bow Goddess, 
Don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, this card is still really good. It's one of the more powerful cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh scene, but again, we're in a point in time where you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! And the longer we can't play Yu-Gi-Oh!, the more this card's value drop because the closer it is to getting reprinted. Abelos of the Bow Goddess is due for a reprint. It's only a matter of time before it becomes a Battles of Legends Chase Seeker Rare, or even better, a Mega 10 2020 card that you guys have to pick up. Abelos of the Bow Goddess is still one of the better cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! even in Master Rule 2020 because of its ease of summoning and the fact that it gives you multiple negates. I mean, I could even make an Apollos of the Bow Goddess with 19 negations, but you don't hear me bragging, you just want to see the video, right? Seriously, you, you want to see me make Apollosa with a whole bunch of negates inside of some weird video where Meshach cries? Well, let's do it. Let's do it. One of the strategies that was reprinted very expensive coming into this year was Madolche. Madolche Magellan went from a $20 super rare to I want to say less than a dollar as an ultra upgrade. Madoshe Chaka Alabo was the same, over $25, and now is less than a dollar in the same rarity. The next card to fall in line because it's already been confirmed for the new Battles of Legend set is Madoshe Angeli, a card that is still relatively expensive, even though there's no way you can play Madoshe right now. I mean, hopefully we do get to a point in time where we're able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! at events, but right now you're holding on to a card that is essentially dead weight. I mean, players might be Angeli that I'm saying this, but this is a card that you probably should spread over until you get the right. <laughs> I, no. no. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm just saying. Angeli. <laughs> Regardless of what puns I put out, I think if you get rid of this Angeli for a little bit of dough, you'll wind up taking the cake. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Let's go. Next one. Next one. One of the better cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the best synchros actually in the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game is Borlode Savage Dragon. This card is amazing as in it can equip a Link Monster from your graveyard to this card, give itself attack and counters for negations. The problem with Borlode Savage Dragon is multiple things. First of all, it came out in the Savage Strike set last year, so it's due for that reprint inside of Mega 10 2020. Now granted, Mega 10 2020 is until June, July, August, one of those days. And that pretty much guarantees that if you do own a Borlode Savage Dragon, you're safe. But that's really not the elephant in the room with this card. The elephant in the room is that links are actually going down in play, as players will try to put more synchros and Exceed monsters. Exceed monsters really, really being good cards that you should play right now. Link monsters are being prioritized to what their effects do. Now, typically, Borlo Savage Dragon could still make do with those, but there's just less opportunities for the card to attach itself to a link. I'm not saying Borlo Savage Dragon is a bad card. By all means, it is an amazing card. Maybe you should have picked it up when I said uh, they were $14 and you should get them before they skyrocket in price, but um, I'm not gonna fault you for that. It's definitely a card you should be looking to get rid of with its $50 price point. As this card does deserve to be in around the 20, 30 range, $50 is a little outrageous. It does make the Rocket Dragon Link deck really good, but um, $50? Another card that has a confirmed reprint inside of an upcoming set, as well as a huge change to the metagame, is Millennium Eyes Restrict. Now, Millennium Eyes Restrict is a fairly powerful card. Being able to equip your opponent's monsters to it, negate their effects, and prevent it from attacking is the perfect solution to hand traps. Being able to stop that Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Droll and Logbird, and DD Crow problem is incredible, but there is one huge problem with Millennium Eyes Restrict. Instant Fusion is limited. With Instant Fusion being limited, it changes the entire landscape of Millennium Eyes Restrict. I don't even know its fusion requirements. Do you know its fusion requirements? Seriously, tell me what are Millennium Eyes fusion requirements off the top of your head, and then also tell me do you plan on playing them? Millennium Eyes Restrict is sitting at $50, which is incredible that it's still sitting at a price point. It is a card that will plummet in price because Instant Fusion, either you have to dedicate that one extra deck slot and your Instant Fusion to Millennium Eyes Restrict and then hope that your opponent is actually playing the card to stop you, or you just kind of leave Millennium Eyes Restrict to the Eyes Restrict deck, which is unfortunate, but sometimes just how it goes. Well, that's it for the cards you guys should sell before they plummet in price. 
I know you guys want to see the video of what cards you should buy before they plummet in price. Be sure to like this video and then let us know down below in the comment section. Also, we might actually be making another video. I don't know, maybe the Cali Effect answers your questions. Go ahead and ask a random question down below in the video. We might get that one done. With all that being said, I hope you guys are staying safe in this time of need. Seriously, guys, stay safe. It's dangerous out there. Even more dangerous than normal. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Like I am.